Okay, at the primer stage, um, as you can see, we get it off its stand, which actually is brilliant for painting it because literally all you do, stick it on the stand and you can just hold it from underneath and did it and then I must have did the sand separate. We've done the other half. Okay, so there we go. There's our X-Wing all done with the primer. Okay, it's quite tricky to get in all those areas. So you wanna make sure, um, you know, that you are coating everything quite nicely without over flooding it and causing puzzles. Cause getting down in here was a little bit tricky just to get in those lips. And you can see them on camera, got the light areas down there, which haven't covered particularly well. Okay, so X-Wing all done. And looking around it again, and just looking at it, there's a couple of lines and things, but to be honest, I don't think it's gonna need gluing together, which is still seems really weird. The point is, hey, look, if you ever wanted to get it apart, it wouldn't be a problem. So anyway, we're gonna do the standard type of chipping effect to this one. Um, the only drawback we've got to it is, is say you look at the box art, you can see a lot of these, um, which will be in our case, will be decals which are down here. As you see, there's numerous decals that are gonna go on here. We're gonna to have to distress the decals, so that's something I'll show you about cutting them up, chipping them, wearing them down, things like that. Okay, just so it's all gonna blend in. Otherwise, we're gonna be in that situation where you're actually gonna come in, put all this down, and unfortunately, the decals are gonna go right over the top of a lot of this chipping, but there's a way around that, and we'll show you. All right, so there we go. So our standard chipping technique is a good old-fashioned sponge. Uh, mask oil of everything. To be honest, this is my favorite one. Uh, this is the Mask and Masking Soul Neo. Uh, it's the Mr. Hobby, the Gunsy stuff. Um, just make sure you shake it so you don't have the green at the bottom. Otherwise, it's really, really thick. Okay, this is the, the oily stuff, which you think would go to the surface, but it's a bit different on these. All right. What I tend to do is grab a clamp. Um, you, you, as I say, because of the scale, we want quite fine, smaller chips. So you want to use a sort of medium sponge. So I've got something like this down here, which is quite a, a smallish sponge. But what you want to do is not use the cut edge. You want to use the torn edge. So tear yourself a bit off, okay? And then I basically fold it back on itself. So if you imagine there's my bit here, this is the rough side, that's the smooth side. We don't want the smooth, because when you put it down, it's just gonna make a nice area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold it back on itself just down here, okay? And then we've got it just like this. And you wanna give it a little bit of room. Don't do it so it's tight either, because otherwise if it's just, you know, it's really tight, you're just gonna make a smooth area. Um, because it's loose and things like that, half of it will stick, half of it won't, you can pull away. Then you just want a top. If we do a different color top so you can see it a little bit better. What I tend to do is take your, your oil, okay? Rub it off the brush and then we're just gonna put a couple of thin passes on here like this. Now you have to be quite quick with this. Then we come along with our sponge and we just dip him in, okay? So you've got lots of little speckles all over it and then being quite quickly, you then put them on. So dip. And then obviously we're thinking about the nose, gonna get it quite a bit, if we're honest. Okay, now not all of these chips are gonna come off, all right? This is the thing, so don't think, right, okay, we've got big old chips. You're gonna leave some of these behind because they're quite small the way they go on. All right, so we're just trying to put this on there. On the front here, you're gonna have, probably have quite a bit. All right, so it's just like that. And then obviously this stuff will go green and be quite hard to see. As soon as it dries off just down here, you just grate yourself a bit more. But you wanna make a thin layer. That way it stops you overloading the sponge. Because as soon as you overload the sponge a little bit too much, you're gonna have real problems. So what we're thinking is obviously leading edges of the actual X-Wing. Gonna get quite a bit. <clears throat> Okay, and um, we're thinking probably around these engines. And all right, this is where fantasy comes in because as we all probably really know is that if you end up getting a chip in space, it probably is gonna be catastrophic, all right? But this is because we're trying to just have a little bit of fun, a little bit of recreation, all right? And stuff like that. So taking a bit more, you, see, you do get through it quite quickly, but don't be, fold into sort of chucking gallons of this down because as soon as you put too much down, that's when you're gonna have real situations where perhaps you're gonna go through too much. Okay, so we're just gonna... Then the idea is this gray paint that we're using is gonna 
chip through and it will be sort of scrape marks and all these things but as I say not all of it's going to come through that's the thing so don't think you're you know going to do too much around here okay so we're just going to put a bit on here perhaps a little bit on those front of the thing but you can see now you've got like a, a splat that's because this is getting too full up all right so that's probably the top half done so down at the bottom so it's probably not the best way of holding this so I'm just going to switch now to use the top of the sponge and then we're thinking probably quite a bit around the gear but we got underneath but you're trying to keep it random and as you can see that sponge is starting to sort of fill up now and, and not come apart too much so we're just going to grab it on a, a separate edge probably get hold of it around the front now and that way we can put these light chippies going in all right and again and it's just a case of building it up all right, so. as I say we want all this to show through and come in so, so some areas are going to get quite a bit some of it's going to be quite small okay and the great thing is what we can actually do is when we're in the process of unmasking it you can say to yourself all right I don't want to take off too much there so quite happy to leave it at that point okay and there we go so I think I've taken one off there I've got it rolled on my finger but that I think will do okay obviously we can put chipping back and we can do it by hand but this is just to give us our starting point you can see sponges with an awful load that get rid of him all right um, and then we can do a quick clean up just on this just keep your pot lids tidy or you can let it go okay so what we're going to do let that dry off only going to take literally about 10 minutes so it's handleable because we don't want to obviously have it wet on your hand and put smudgy prints all over it and everything else like that then we can make up our custom mix of our colors so actually what we're going to use so as I say you have got this here this is what we're looking at you know this color that we were talking about here which is sky gray is a good color I think to go with but in the absence of it this is what I'm going to do I'm going to make up a sort of custom mix so you've got your choice here it's basically going to be a case of lightening these two colors and that's what we're going to do to sort of give a a mottled effect shall we say that sort of starship look with panels of different colors things like that as we work our way through Okay, everything's completely dry now, so we're all a little handleable. Uh, taking it off a stand so we can just use it on this one. I wouldn't trust it 100%, it's not exactly brilliant, but it'll be good enough for what we need. Easiest way to put it down there will be on its back end. The engines, I can pull them off and we can paint them as a separate and fit them afterwards. So, two colors we're gonna go for, well, three-ish, all right? Um, so what we're gonna be using is XF19 as our base color, uh, and we're gonna really lighten it up with XF2. We've also got a little bit of XF80, which is the raw um, light gray by Tamiya. It's a nice color, it's like a three-way mix of the colors. You might notice this one's a little bit more, I don't know, creamy color. The gray is quite a sharp gray, uh, but we're gonna thin it right the way down. So in the bottle here, we've got some X20A thinners, all right? So I'm just gonna give a bit of a squeeze there. To be honest, the reason it's in there is um, I'm out of the Vallejo one, number one. Uh, number two is I love, it's just easy squirting it in. The other one, you need a pipette and you squirt it out and all the things. Anyway, so anyway, we've got in there basically around about a third thinners. We're just gonna check our flow because I did use it for priming. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. I have to be a little bit careful here because of everything's a little bit out of the way. These all have a good shake to start with. Okay, so we've got the, the white and the other one. So we've got our little mixing stick here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with the white because that's our primary colour. All right, so we're going to go in there with around about uh, another third of white for the minute all right and then we're going to give it a mix now as we all know spraying white traditionally um, you make it a really thick color 
The reason it is it covers well and goes down in one. If it's too thin, it takes forever to paint. This one, it's on such a small scale, I'm gonna take a little bit more time with it, a little bit more refined than I normally would, all right? So, just cleaned off the brush. So I'm just gonna grab a brush load of gray and stick it in here. The idea for this is, what I'm trying to recreate is a dirty white. Okay, that sort of grimy white, and that actually isn't bad right off the bat. Okay, I'm actually quite happy with that, so I'm gonna stop right there. That's worked better than I thought it would. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna pop this on and see exactly what we've got. Now, I'm not doing this with a spray booth. Uh, normally I have my spray booth, so we're doing it light. So what I'm gonna do is do a little bit, then I'll get it over to the booth to do the rest, all right? So we're just gonna check our flow in the normal way. Happy that that's coming through. Uh, we're just gonna pick a one up here. And we're just taking our time, putting it down. You can hear we're quite a strong air pressure on this. So the idea being, is that it's gonna cover and dry in one. Okay, and actually, I'm pretty chuffed with that. That's come out a lot better than I thought. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna run around and do all the tricky areas. Because I don't wanna do the big easy areas, because getting in things like between the wings here, you're gonna get overspray everywhere. So you can do the bigger areas afterwards. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do the leading and trailing edges, and we're gonna do inside this X-wing, in between the foils, so that way it's got time to dry and you don't over flood as you're moving around other things. So we can do around these engines, this entire back section. And then when it's looking wet and all the horrible signs start to appear with getting wet paint, i.e. it takes forever to dry in all those areas, we can move off and do somewhere else, all right? So in we go, just taking our time, getting underneath these engines and in. Down the side there. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna do with the foils open, okay? And then if you need to, to get in the angles, because obviously if you may be having it closed down one day, you're gonna have shadows, um, then you can close the, uh, the foils up to get in there, all right? So it's really straightforward on this. Okay. And we want a decent, thick, white coat. We don't want it sort of, you know, pre-shading, half-and-hearted and all that type of thing. We're looking for a good colour. Okay. All right, so there we go. I'm going to carry on now, get over in the spray bay, and just finish doing this to the rest of the model. Okay, so there we go, looking really nice. Happy with the colour, it's got this sort of off-white, all right, but what we wanna do is just slightly break it up. Now, originally, I was gonna go around and do um, panels and pick them out, but actually, I'm thinking more of, we're gonna go more with a weathered look, just to try and stop it looking like a little brick, okay? So this time, we've got the light gray. This is the XF80, all right? So, we're gonna basically repeat, in fact, we've got very, very little in there. In fact, we've got hardly anything in there but we've got a bit at the bottom. So all we've done is just giving it a, a squirt of X28 because we literally only want a smidge to color the white. But what I want to do is we don't want to just do another XF18 color in there because it's gonna look exactly the same. So doing it this way, hopefully it'll just give us a little bit different. So exactly the same we did before, but we're not gonna need much. So it's just a dribble in the bottom like that. Then a bit of the white goes in there. And then this time we're gonna take a dollop of this. All right, so the theory behind this is this should be a different color, okay? And because it's more of a creamy color, in theory, it should be slightly lighter. And actually, I don't think that's too bad. I quite like that color there, all right? So if we just move those out of the way, check our flow. Okay, so this is actually more of a, a whitish effect. So all we're going to do is we're just gonna pop around and we're just gonna do panels and areas and squiggles literally all over it. And I know this is gonna be very difficult to see. And what I'm doing is I'm angling it so I can actually see the wet look come through, okay? So we do the tops of those engines and perhaps these back bits. Okay, and perhaps do a couple of run over them a couple of times just to get them all to come in, all right? Now the nose, I'm gonna give quite a bit to, so I wanna change the color of the nose just a little bit. 
All right, so that's going to get a proper coat, but the rest of it is just patches and squiggles. All right, all over this. And if you've got anywhere that's a little bit gray still, like that bottom laser cannon looks a little bit, and over there, okay, we can just pop around and perhaps down in this cockpit. Now it's got a bit in there, we'll give a bit more of this color just on there. Okay, and then we're gonna do that blending in thing now and go right the way over everything so it just blends it all together. Okay, then we can do exactly the same on the underside. So we're just picking out areas. Okay. Again, right over just to blend it in. And to be honest, this underside's a little bit not as good. Okay, so we're just gonna give a bit more work under there. A bit more on those cannons on the underside of them. Okay, and there we go. So I don't know how much it will show on camera because obviously we're white on white basically but it does work for my eye looking at it. It's just broken it all up a little bit and just like that. And that is it, simple, easy paint job. As I said, a couple of detail areas we're gonna do obviously later on. Now, as I said, you have got this option. Do you wanna use decals? Do you wanna use um, painting it? If you wanted to now, the red sections, you could go along and even the markings for the different reds. Uh, you know, we've got red five down the back here. You can cut the decals. You can give it any type of marking you actually want on these. So from our point of view, we might change it from being red five because obviously being Luke's aircraft, technically the markings are wrong for that. Uh, so we might change it sort of like, you know, something else. Um, but technically all the different areas on here are absolutely fine, no problem at all. If you wanted to use them, obviously just paint them on by hand, mask up the red bars down the nose, it'd be a simple job, okay? Or if you wanted to, and it sounds really weird, take it apart and paint them, put it back together, could be done, all right? To do it that way. Personally, we're gonna go with the decals because I'm gonna weather and show you about weathering the decals and all those things. So what we're gonna do, let that bit dry off, okay? Once those are completely dried off, I'm gonna give it a satin coat right the way over it uh, of clear, basically just to seal it down and make it all handleable because obviously you're gonna be handling it a lot. Then we can do the decaling, then we can do the detail painting and everything else like that. Then we can get on with the further weathering of a wash uh, and things like that. So, because we could probably do a lot of pin washes on this, things like that, to make Make all this sharp detail really pop out. Okay, so totally all dry now. So what actually what we can do is start working on that chipping, taking the chipping off and just generally having a look at it. Now, when you're removing the chipping, two things to remember. Uh, first of all, it's acrylic paint, so it's very fragile best to give it an overcoat. So with this one, it's just had a satin uh, gloss right the way over it. It's been drying for only about half an hour. It's acrylic, it doesn't take long. Uh, and it, it works better because it's got a hard shell on the top. Acrylic paint by its nature always tends to be quite soft. By giving it this uh, sort of eggshell effect or a crispy coating, it makes the chipping more sharper, more splintery. Uh, and because the mask or as it pulls up, flakes as it comes off, gives you a better look. If you don't, what can tend to happen is it goes a little bit too far or you might end up with just it's actually scratching down to bare plastic. Options for getting it off, okay. Couple of ways, you can use a rubber, okay. So if you've got a rubber, the great thing about it is you rub it over the surface you're going on, like here, okay, and it will rub it away. Then you can just use your finger, okay, and you just get the, the chipping to come away like that. The good thing about using a rubber is it's pretty safe because you're not gonna scratch through uh, or anything else like that, okay? It's gonna be quite hard to get it to go off. The only thing is sometimes if you're dealing with smaller flakes, um, it's good, but if you want big ones to get in there, sometimes if the actual mask is very, very thin, it doesn't come away too easy. Um, like down here is a good example. I've got it down here, but giving this a rub over, although it's going, it's gonna take quite a bit to actually get it to, to come off, all right? Pretty good is a cotton bud, all right? So you can just use a cotton bud. If you've got one that's an old one, i.e. it's got a little bit crispy because it's had something on it, they work a little bit better. But again, the same thing, you can give it a rub over and you go through. The only trouble is, unlike we've done it here, which isn't so much of a problem, you can rub right the way through. They tend to be all or nothing. That's the thing is, because what happens is it gets to that plastic in a bit and it comes off. Good old way is a toothpick, all right? Again, 
If you've got an older one, it tends to work a little bit better, but generally you can just put it down like this and you just gently rub across the surface. And because the mask oil is slightly raised, it gives you that nice chip and then just rub your finger, circular motions, and it brings away the chipping just like that, all right? The other way, if you haven't got anything like that, you sort of use the back of a paintbrush. Okay, so on here, you can literally just come along and give it a rub. The trouble is with these, again, you have to be a bit, bit careful because you might end up going right the way through. So personally, I'm a great fan of a cocktail stick. So all we're going to do is you lightly rub over the area. You can see it in there, okay? So you can just give it a light rub everywhere you know there's uh, some mask oil around okay and then once you've been round you can then just rub it with your finger and that will expose the chipping to it okay and the great thing about using a uh, something like a toothpick is you can get right into some very tricky areas okay all right and the other thing is with a toothpick you can increase it so if you want a little bit more you can gently rub through and scrape it round. So if we just pop around and take a few areas off. Okay, so we've got a nice big one at the back there. All right, but this is what we're saying. Sometimes you won't see everywhere you've been, all right? So, so you know, you just have to sort of remember where you were sometimes. Okay. So let me get the back here. Okay, oh, that one's come off which isn't a bad thing because it means we can get right around the area. Set, so, put it back on. As I say, I haven't actually properly fixed any of this, which is the amazing thing about it because things like this slides back to get the R2 unit out and various things. So that's it, so just a little bit more in here. Okay, and then obviously we've got the various things on the front end so we're just going to lightly rub all around these edges okay and then you come in with your finger and we can increase the scratching okay, just like so I'm going to say we're not trying to chew it all totally up but we're trying to give it that sort of worn look Leading edges, the last bit. There's some more to go on, but I'll finish that off in a minute. Okay, but you get the gist, and you can see the difference in the chips all the way. Over. Now I've done the underside already, as you can see. All right, and you say we're not going tons all round this one, all out on it. We're just literally trying to, you know, just add a little bit of depth and everything to it. Then the nose comes off, which is handy because I was going to paint it a separate colour but I don't think we're going to need to now, but it just, it's easier that these bits all pop off because you can physically get in here to do the chipping and the, the worn work. Okay, a little bit off the nose. Okay. And there we go. Sometimes it takes a bit to get going, but you see quite large chips on the bottom, which is the type of thing we wanted, a little bit more muted on the top, but we've definitely got them on the front. So I'm pretty happy with all of those, which a couple more. Just be careful like they're doing it your nail, because to be honest, I've gone over done it and gone through the paint. But there we go. That's the, the chipping work all done on there. And then all we got to do is marry that up with the decals. Okay, so it's quite easy. We can cut them with a knife, tear them, all the bits and pieces just to give them a little bit more of an effect 
as we make our way around all of them. So that's all good, happy with all of that. A couple more just down here, just want to get rid of. Okay. There we go, all in there, all ready to go. So next up, the deckling. As we said before, you have got the option of these sheets, and these sheets are absolutely fantastic. So, you know, obviously we're gonna go for deckling. You've seen me do this a million times before, so we're just gonna pull one off, 17. It's quite a lot going on down here, as you can see, all right? So, you know, obviously we've got the top, so we know 17 is this top one over here. So what we're gonna do is just gonna do this one, okay. And then what we'll do, I'm gonna keep it as is the decals actually. Originally I was gonna cut up the numbers and do different ones and various things, but I think we're okay. Just while we're on it, I've done the nozzles. I've just done them the Tamiya Burnt Iron XF84 color. They're gonna be dry brushed anyway, just to lighten them up. The entire thing's gonna be dry brushed once it's been deckled and sealed, all right? Usual thing down here, I've got a tiny bit of micro um, set and sole. Um, we've got the blue one just in here. We use the red one for going over the top, all right? So it just goes in, warm water, usual thing and then hopefully i can't imagine these will take too long because they're relatively new so we just leave them in there a sec but you've got <clears throat> we've got the red one and the blue one just down in here got to get some more of that that's almost empty the red one on top do you want two nice clean brushes make sure you've got nothing on them like that one's got a bit of wash on it so we'll just give that a clean off we want clean brushes if you haven't got clean brushes, trouble is like there, if you've got like a color on it, it gets underneath the carrier film and then you can see it and it looks like a stain on your model when it actually isn't, okay? So we've got this guy just down here. So he's just moving on the backing paper and that's what we want. Check your references, make sure you're all good, how it's all gonna go and it's gonna line up and all the things to it. So we're gonna take the water, pop the water underneath and then usual thing, place and pull. All right, and then we can then square up to exactly where it's going to go. Just double check, triple check your references, exactly how it is. And this guy does come just down into here. And I'm just gonna pull it just off of the panel line, just a fraction. All right, and that one goes in. And then if you moisten a cotton bud, give it a roll, Get a little bit of water on it you'll find it'll soak up a lot easier then all we do is roll right over the top now we're not going to chip out or take any chunks out of the deckle yet until it's totally sealed down but that goes on there just like that and then all we do we're just going to come along with the micro set sorry sole which is the setting solution all right and then we're just going to give it a rub over the top just to seal it down making sure you go right past the actual carrier film, okay? So it floods right the way over, okay? Just like that. Lots of them go on here, as you can see. You've got tons of them all going around, but I think they're all pretty straightforward. Uh, any problems, I'll come back with you. So I'm gonna carry on now, get this thing completely decalled. Then I'm gonna give it a flat coat right the way over everything before we come back and we start to move on with more of the weathering. 